and that's it. Now you can use partitions bigger than this. If you remember back to our Amiga hard drive tutorial videos, we set up an 80 gig drive. So we had, I think it was a one gig partition for workbench. And then we had 40 gig and then whatever was left. But you do need to move to Workbench 3.9 to do that. We're only using Workbench 3.1 today. That's why we have this limitation here. Yeah, that's not quite right. It is very easy to set up a larger partition under Workbench 3.1. I'm going to show you how to do that today. This is a 40 gigabyte hard drive. We'll set up a 1 gig partition for workbench, 15 gig for WSD load, and then whatever's left for files. This is ridiculously simple to do. There is no limitation. You do not need OS 3.9. Let's get into it. Okay, so our hard drive is connected up over the IDE to USB adapter. And what we're doing today works exactly the same, regardless if you're using the real IDE drive or a CF card or an SD card or whatever, it doesn't matter. The procedure is the same. So we're going to be using our Xbench PC folder. I'll link it in the description below again. And we need to open our readme text file. There's just some files in here that we need to use. In WinUAE, I have just a basic installation of 3.1 here on a hard file we need to copy a few bits and pieces from our pc directory across to this last time we just dragged them across in the xbench video if you remember this time let's do something a bit different let's use shell to copy them so it's really easy just copy pc scuzzy dot device dot four three dot four five and that needs to go to devs that's it done. I'll just work my way down through the rest of them. Right, that's it. We don't need to copy the kickstarts. In fact, out of this, all we really need is the file system, load module, and SCSI.device. So, actually, what we should have done, we need to edit our startup sequence. Because we need to load that new SCSI device because we're working with the big hard drive. So at the top of your startup sequence, you want to add this line here C colon load module space devs colon SCSI device that's 45.43. Right hand mouse button. Project save, project quit. We can now press F12 to go back into the emulation reset. And we'll just quickly confirm that it has loaded the new SCSI device. Yep, that's fine. Right, so back into emulation. We don't need this PC folder anymore. We can remove that. And we're going to add our hard drive. So this is it here for me, our 37.3 gigabytes. Always pick Commodore IDE. Set that to 1 because our uh, hard file is set to 0. Restart and start. Okay, so back in Workbench, I'm going to open our hard file. We want Tools and HD Toolbox. So it's this one here we need. Change Drive Type. Define New and Read Configuration. Right. Before we just click OK, we need to note down a couple of things here. So at the bottom of our readme file, we're just going to note down the cylinders, heads and blocks per track. 
So cylinders is seven seven five two zero. Heads is sixteen and tracks is sixty three. So what has that got to do with anything? Well, using those numbers we can calculate the size of the hard drive. All you need is a basic calculator. So if we take our cylinders, which is 77520, and if we multiply that by 16, multiply that by 63, and then multiply that number by 512, there's our 40 gigabyte hard drive. We'll divide that by 1024. That's it in K. Divided by 1024 in megabytes. Gigabytes. 37.26 gigabyte hard drive. That's about right for 40 million bytes. So we're just going to note that down. So it is 37.26 gig. Now, our first partition, we're going to make one gig in size. So what we'll do is we'll just take our cylinders, 77520, and we're going to divide that number by 37.26. So we need 2,080 cylinders to give us a one gig partition. Hopefully this is making sense. Right, so jump back into the emulation here and we can just click OK on this now. So we now want to partition this hard drive. Just delete this partition here, which is UDH1. This one here though, we are going to totally ignore the slider. And we're going to click Advanced Options. The start cylinder is always 2. So our end cylinder, if we click here, we can just delete that out. And then we can type in 2081. Which give us, gives us a drive size of total cylinders 2080, which will be one gigabyte. We're going to add our new file system, which we copied across to L earlier. So PFS3AIO, hit enter, press OK. The DOS type, we need to change to 504 65303. Hit enter. Click OK. Now we need to click change. And change the PFS03. And change the max transfer to 1FE00. Hit enter. Click OK. Right, we're going to create another partition now. Oh, sorry. Before we do that, let's just change the name of that to D80. And always make sure that this is checked bootable. Right, let's create our next partition, DH1, that we're going to use for WHD load. We said we're going to make that about 15 gig or so. So new partition, and click up here. Again, we're just going to completely ignore the sliders now, and we're going to concentrate down here. So our last partition ended at cylinder 2081. This one is going to start at cylinder 2082. We need our calculator back. Now we know a one gig partition is 2080 cylinders. And we want 15 gigs, so let's multiply it up. So it's 31,200. We are starting at cylinder 2082. So we'll add that on. 33,282. 
Let's type that in here. Press enter to confirm. I know this does say that's only three gigabytes. Just ignore that. This will work fine. We want to change the partition device name to DH1. We need to change the file system, PFS03. Don't forget to change your Mac transfer. And then we'll create one more partition just to fill up the rest of the drive. We're going to call this one DH2. So we're starting this time, one cylinder up, 33,283. We have a total cylinders of 77520. So that is correct, the end cylinder, it's always one less. For example, if we tried to type in 20, it just reverts back. So that is the end of the drive. Again, don't forget to change your file system. And your max transfer. And believe it or not, that is it. Click OK. We need to save the changes to the drive. Now, make sure you save changes to both drives, even though we're not changing anything on the hard file. Let's just save that anyway. We're going to click Exit. Then if we restart emulation, here we are. So we can now go ahead and format these. Always do a quick format, very important. especially on these larger drives. Do not try to do a full format or you'll screw it up. Again, just ignore the capacity here. And that is it. We have a one gigabyte partition here, 15 gig here, and whatever's left for this one. Right, but how are we going to prove that to you? Because if we open this, it says it's only two gigabytes. If we install the likes of Dopus, so I just have to add our PC directory again. And when you crashed. Okay, we're back. Not very often that when you crashes. So I am just going to install Dopus quickly. So if we take a look in here, we have our DHO, this is on the hard drive, our OS 3.1 drive, and it is 949.5 megabytes. 
Our DH1, which is our WSD load, is reading us 14 gigabytes. Maybe to get that calculation quite right. And DH2 is 19.9. So as you can see within Dopus, it is picking up the drive size correctly. In fact, while we're here, I'm just going to copy this whole uh, system directory across to our hard drive. We can then jump in the emulation. We can lose that folder. In fact, let's remove all of those. When I put them directly off the hard drive. And as you can see, it is working fine. DHO, DH1, 14 gig, DH2, the guts of 20 gig. There we are. That's it. No mucking about with OS 3.9 or anything like that. All you need to do is patch your SCSI device, use the PFS3 AAO file system, and you're away. Your partition size can be as big as you want. That's it for this week. I just wanted to clarify that little point. If you enjoyed what you've seen, please hit that thumbs up. Why not share the video around? Leave a comment below if you've anything to say. And uh, I'll see you next time.